Good morning everyone and welcome to the preview of the fifth and last monument of the year, the 116th edition of the Il Lombardia, which will be held this Saturday, October the 8th. On this occasion, the race of the falling leaves will feature 25 teams, the 18 World Tour 1s and 7 guests, who will take on the 253 km route between Bergamo and Como. It will be the last race as professional cyclists for Alejandro Valverde, Vincenzo Nivali, Mikel Nieve or Tanel Kangert, and here we come to analyze the route and the main favorites and outsiders for the race, as well as the most notable absentees. Don't forget to leave a comment with who you think will take the victory or which three will climb to the final podium. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and let's go with the Il Lombardia preview. Disclaimer, the teams were analyzed as known on the afternoon of the 7th of October, so any subsequent changes to the lineups will be included in the comment down below. We start with the route of Il Lombardia, from Bergamo to Como, which was announced just two weeks before the race. It consists of just over 250 kilometers, a distance not reached since 2014, and although at first it may seem a little weak due to the absence of the fearsome Mordis Romano, in whose descent Evenepoel fell two years ago, or some other higher mileage ascent in the final part, I really think it is a very balanced profile with 4,800 meters of elevation gain and many climbs. The first half of the race is the hardest since at least 1999, as far as I can go of procycling stats. The first 120 km is a constant up and down with up to 5 climbs of some importance, of which we have to highlight the usual Paso de Ganda, 9 km at 7%. After the intermediate valley on the way to Lake Como, we reach the last 70 km, which start with the ascent to Madonna del Ghisallo and its chapel from Bellagio, with a fine point fight gradient that peaks at 14%. This would normally be followed by the Muro di Sormano, but it has been eliminated perhaps because of the danger of its ascent. So, before the finish in Como, in the last 30 km, we have the San Fermo della Battaglia Sibiglio San Fermo della Battaglia circuit passing the finish line after the first descent of San Fermo. Although San Fermo is not the most threatening climb in terms of gradient, less than 3 km at almost 7%, the legs will already be very tired, and that will be especially noticeable on Sibiglio, 4 km at 10% with a section at 14%, an ideal moment to attack if the strength is conserved, although there is also the possibility to try on the descent, as Nivali did in 2015. The finish is placed in Como after the second descent of San Fermo and only the final kilometer and a half is flat, with a 600 meter straight to crown the new winner of the Lombardia. In short, the finish is less mountainous and more of a classic type, but I think the route is deceptive. It will be demanding, and although we might not see Enrique Mas or Pogacar solo win to the finish, I don't think we'll see a sprint between 15 riders unless there is a final regroup. Having analyzed the route, it is time to talk about the most notable absence. Mathieu van der Poel, who will go to the Gravel World Champs in Veneto, Wout van Aert, who could have benefited massively from the profile, and Primoz Roglic, who is not in full condition after his ball in the Vuelta and is resting. Faust Thomas Nada, second last year, will be missing due to several problems since the Vuelta, and also Simon Yates, who suffered a training crash a few days ago and sustained some minor injuries. Another absentee is Renko Venepoel, who will be celebrating his wedding after having worn the rainbow jersey for the first time in the vintage Mai Vinci. Other notable absence include Ben Marcos Nefoa, who after finishing fifth in the Trevale Varesine said he is better suited to the Paris Tours course than this one. Thibaut Pinot, winner in 2018, who has already called it a day for his season, as has his teammate David Coru, who is not feeling 100%. There is also Jan Jumbo Association Thomas Gloak or Ruben Fernandez, seventh in Emilia. We start the favorites analysis with the rival to beat, the winner of the 2021 edition, Tari Pogacar. The Slovenian is not worried after being beaten by Enric Mas in the Giro dell'Emilia and claims to be in very good shape, even better than last year. I think the course suits him well and we already saw in the Trevale Varesine that he is the fastest among the participants in a sprint finish. Pogacar wants to repeat last year's victory and he comes surrounded by a powerful team with Morfolo, Maika, Ulisi, Almeida and company. But if there's someone Pogacar is keeping an eye on, a will he doesn't want to lose, it's that of Enrique Mas. The Spaniard is in superb form, working for Valverde in Agostoni and Trevale Varesini and exchanging roles in the Giro dell'Emilia, where he was the strongest of all, making Pogacar himself give in. 
If the final was in a world, I would have put him as the top favorite perhaps, but we can't rule out that he breaks the rest in one of the final climbs and the others congratulate him after the finish line. As the other 4 star favorite, I put Jonas Vingago, who showed in Croatia that the three weeks of training in Spain have been great for him and that the post-tour pressure no longer exists. It is true that he faced much lower level rivals in Croatia, but Vingago has assured that Lombardy is the his other big goal of the season and that he comes ready to fight. Watch out for the Dane! Let's go now to the three star favorites and we start with Alejandro Valverde. After a Vuelta in which he was not at his best level, the Italian Classics campaign has been magnificent. Fourth in Emilia, third in Baresine and second in Agostoni. And possibly will he be first in Lombardia to put the finishing touch to an incredible career? Valverde considers himself as one of the favorites, given his form and the course. He is ready for his last victory with the last bullet, La Ultima Bala. Another who would benefit from a final sprint of a small group would be the Colombian Sergio Higuita, only beaten by Pogacar in Trevale Varesine. He arrives on good form after the Vuelta and could take the victory. And the other Colombian who will do well is Rigoberto Urán, or at least that's what his performance in the previous Italian races indicates. Three top tens in the three in which he has participated. A podium would be the ideal result to crown a great end of the season. Let's go now to the two star favorites and we start with the other retiring rider, Vincenzo Nivali, who has assured that he's not coming for a stroll, that he wants to win one last time. Will he get his third win after 2017 and 2015? Watch out for him on the descent of Stibiglio if he has the legs. Another Italian who could do well is Domenico Pozzovivo, the third in contention in the Giro dell'Emilia and who also showed a good level in Agostoni and Trevale Varesine. He's looking for a new contract and excelling in Lombardia could give him one. Alberto Betiol, for if education is supposed, could also be one to look out for. Jonathan Philippe could be the best French asset and he looked pretty good in the hardest part of the Copa Bernocchi without the rainbow jersey although I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't have the strength to respond in the key moments. Adam Yates, 6th in Trevale Varesine, will be the most dangerous weapon for Ineos, which also comes with Daniel Felipe Martinez and Carlos Rodriguez. The best option for Bahrain Victorious will most likely be Matej Mohoric after his victory in Extremis in the Tour of Croatia. And we can also highlight with two starts Alexander Vlasov, who hasn't stood out much in the previous races, and Davide Formolo, who could act as a satellite rider for Pogacar and came 4th in Agostoni and 9th in Emilia. And we finish with the outsiders, among whom we have another Colombian, Superman Lopez. Julio Sicone or Vauke Molema, winner three years ago, could be an option, although the latter has made a half reconversion to anti trialist this year. Michael Storer, who was seen moderately strong in Barresina Emilia, Lorenzo Fortunato, 6th in the Giro dell'Emilia, Nilsson Paules for EF Education Easy Post, as well as Andrea Piccolo, who would need a small group finale like in Agostoni, or Woods of Fuslan for Israel Premier Tech, even though morale on the team is completely sunk, are other names. In addition to Alaphilippe, the French tricolor tide comes with top cyclists like Madois, Barguil, Martin, or Bardet, as well as Champoussin, Paché, Latour. Although, based on recent results, perhaps the best will end up being Rudy Mollard. Of course, we shouldn't be surprised if Madoua or Bardet, who comes along with Taimen Aresman on DSM, are in the final fight and perhaps I should have put them a little bit higher on the list. And I think we have enough with all these names, as I don't see Andreas Kron, Jesus Herrada or the Alpecin trio of Vine, Astana and Oldani making the biggest splash of their lives. And here ends the preview of a Lombardia 2022, the last monument and big race of the season. I hope you liked the video and if you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. See you in a few days with a new edition of the Cycling Bulletin.